All right, students, so today we're going to be working on lesson 1.11 in our Go Math book. And this is pages 67 through 72. Okay, so pages 67 through 72. So you will need a pencil. I would bring your whiteboard or a piece of scratch paper to work through problems today because um, there's going to be a lot of steps that we're going to be taking a look at. And then, um, of course, pages 67 through 72. So if you don't have those, go ahead and grab them right now and we'll get started. Um, if you need to pause this video throughout, please make sure you're doing so. Um, the other thing I want to just um, remind you of is that if you start working on your math homework once I assign the problems at the very end and you're confused and you're unsure of how to do it, you can always call me at our classroom at 385-646-2034 and you can also come to office hours between 12 p.m. and 1 p.m. every single day okay so I post a Google Meet right on our class stream for you to go ahead and um, come in and get extra help if you need to okay so anyway let's get started so in lesson 1.10 we actually looked at numerical expressions right and numerical expressions are they use operation symbols and um, they typically are um, multiple numbers and there's no equal sign. Okay, now today we're going to be evaluating numerical expressions. Now that's the big word there. Now people see the word evaluate and they, they freeze up and they panic. All evaluate means is to solve. Okay, it's a fancy word for the word solve. Okay, you're going to solve the problem. You're going to find the answer for me. Okay. So let's take a look at this at the top where it says connect. Remember that a numerical expression is a mathematical phrase that uses only numbers and operation symbols. And they give us some examples down here. So they have 5 minus 2 times 7. We've got numbers. We've got 5, 2, and 7. We've got some operation signs. In this case, we have a subtraction sign and a multiplication sign. There is no equal sign. So that's a numerical expression, okay? Same here, we have 72, 9, and 16, those are all numbers, and we have some um, operation signs, division and addition, okay? And then again over here, same thing, okay? So we're going to go down here where it says to evaluate. I'm actually going to zoom in just a little bit so you can see here. So it says to evaluate or find the value of a numerical expression with more than one type of operation, you must follow rules called the order of operations, okay? So evaluate. Up above that word evaluate, I want you to put the word solve. To solve, to find the answer, okay? That's what that means, okay? And we're going to talk about what order of operations means, and I'm actually going to teach you um, a way to do the order of operations and to remember the order of operations, okay? So it says the order of operation tells you in what order you should evaluate an expression, okay? So before we go down to this unlock the problem stuff, over here, where it says order of operations, it gives us some steps, and I'm going to give you um, a really easy way to remember this, okay? So number one, it says to perform operations in parentheses. So you have to do it in this order. You cannot just willy-nilly jump around and do what you want first. You have to do it in this order. So one, perform operations in parentheses. 2. Multiply and divide from left to right, like we read a book. 3. Add and subtract from left to right, just like we read a book. Okay, so the order of operations, I want you to write PEMDAS, P-E-M-D-A-S. That's our way to remember the order of operations, okay? I'm going to tell you a little rhyme. Kind of, it's not really a rhyme, I guess. It's just a saying. To remember PEMDAS. So anytime you hear Miss Van Etten say the word PEMDAS, I'm referring to the order of operations, okay? So PEMDAS. One way we can remember this is... Oh, let me scoot over here. Please excuse my dear and I'm running out of room of course Aunt Sally and I want you to write that down if you need to pause the video to do that please do so 
So PEMDAS, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Now, you're thinking, okay, Miss V, you're absolutely crazy. What are you talking about, right? No, this is going to help you. This relates to math so much, and you're going to use it so much, okay? So we've got our P for PEMDAS. What that means is parentheses. We've got our E for excuse. What that means is exponents. So we'll write an exponent and circle it. We've got the M for my multiplication. We've got the D for dear division. We've got the A for ant addition, and we've got the S for Sally, which is subtraction, okay? So all of those things are an operation and the order in which we have to do the operation. So we've got parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, PEMDAS. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, okay? Now, where it says unlock the problem on your page, if you need to pause it to write that down, please do so, because you will be using it a lot, and you will need to remember that, okay? So where it says unlock the problem, it says a bread recipe calls for four cups of wheat flour and two cups of rye flour. To triple the recipe, how many cups of flour are needed in all? Now, Ms. Van Enn's gonna be honest with you, I don't like that they give you this problem first because this problem is an example of somebody who did it incorrectly and they want you to fix it. And I don't think that's a good idea to do right off the bat, okay? So we're gonna skip part A. But what we're gonna do is we're evaluating three times four plus three times two to find the total number of cups of flour, okay? And the reason why is we are tripling, I want you to underline the word triple, tripling the recipe, so we're tripling the four cups of wheat flour, and we're tripling the two cups of rye flour, okay? Now, they've rewritten the problem over here on part B, and that's where we're going to actually hop over to. So we're going to do this, and I'm going to zoom in so you can see it, okay? So it says, follow the order of operations by multiplying first, then adding, okay? We're gonna write, anytime I do a multiple, or anytime I do an order of operations problem, I write PEMDAS on my paper next to the problem. So I can cross those out as I work through them. Okay, so we're gonna start on the left, just like we read a book. We read a book left to right, okay? So we have the P. Do you see any parentheses in this problem? If you don't, you cross it off. We don't need to do it. Okay, now we're going to come to problems where there's going to be parentheses and we'll solve those. But for right now, we don't have to worry about it. E for exponents. Do you see any exponents in this problem? No? Cross it off. Okay. Then we go to M. Now the great thing about M and D is that you're going to, these can be solved in either order. Okay, and the same with A and S. They can be solved in either order. So if you read the problem from left to right and you come across a multiplication first, then you'll do that first. But let's say you're reading it from left to right and there's division first. You can do division. Okay, but for this case, we're working on multiplication. That's where we're at, multiplication. So we actually have two multiplication problems here and we have an addition sign, but we're gonna wait to do that, okay? So you can cover up that addition sign yeah, I'll use this pen to cover that addition sign. Hopefully we can still see the other problem. So let's do it in two pieces. We have 3 times 4, which we already know is 12, because we can use mental math to solve that. Then over here we have 3 times 2, which is 6. But we can't forget about that addition sign. See how we just simplified that problem? So we've done our multiplication. There is no division. We're moving on to addition. 12 plus 6, okay? 12 plus 6 is 18. And we're done with that. That's our answer is 18. 
We do not have any more addition or subtraction, so cross those off, okay? So all you're doing is working from left to right and following the please excuse my dear Aunt Sally method, okay? We're going to do a bunch of examples today because this is something that you have to really get used to, okay? Let me zoom out here. Okay. I want to look at this example here, but I'm going to tell you right now, we're not going to look at this stuff. We're going to solve it over here on our own, okay? So the example says, each batch of granola Lena makes uses three cups of oats, one cup of raisins, and two cups of nuts. Lena wants to make five batches of granola. How many cups of oats, raisins, and nuts will she need in all, okay? So let's take a look at this using the order of operations. So the first thing I always, always, always do is write PEMDAS next to the problem on my paper. You don't have to write it huge, just write it very small so that you can solve that problem and work through it from left to right, okay? Now, they've already given us the expression. This is our expression. We're going to rewrite it over here in this space so that we can work through it together and have a little bit more room to write. Okay, so rewrite that. If you need to pause the video, go ahead and pause it. And I'm going to zoom in on it so we can see it a little better. All right, so let's take a look at this. So if we're using the rule, the order of operations rules, we start with the P, which is parentheses. Do you see parentheses in this problem? Yes. So that tells me I have to solve everything inside that parentheses before I can do anything else. So we're going to pretend like the 5 times 1 isn't there, and I'm going to cover it up with this pen, okay? So we're going to solve everything inside the parentheses, okay? So we have 3 plus 1, which is 4, plus 2 more gives us 6. Now anytime you solve anything inside a parentheses, they go away. So the beautiful part about it is now the parentheses are gone because we solved everything inside of it. And we're going to cross out the P because we've done the parentheses now. Now we're going to rewrite the five times down here because we can't forget about that. That's still part of our problem, okay? Now we're going to go to the E for exponents. Do you see any exponents in this new problem that we've created? If not, cross it out. Then we're going to go to the M for multiplication. 5 times 6, we do have multiplication here. 5 times 6 is 30. Cross off our M. We don't have to worry about any more of these because we've got our answer. And we circle or box, box it in, okay? And over here, we'll write the answer here. So Lena will use... 30 cups of oats, raisins, and nuts in all. 30 cups of oats, raisins, and nuts in all. Okay? All right, let's take a look at where, down here where it says try this, and it's got a little A by it. Oh, wait for that bell to ring, guys. Sorry. All right, let's look at this here. So it says rewrite the expression with parentheses to equal the given value. So here they give you 6 plus 12 times 8 minus 3, and they're telling you that it needs to equal 141, okay? So it has to equal 141, okay? So we have to figure out, and this might take you a few times. We're going we're gonna to look at this problem right here. We need to figure out where we need to place parentheses so that we get the answer 141. So I'm going to go over here, and like I said, you may have to rewrite this problem a couple times, and that's okay. And I'm going to start by trying to place my parentheses. Let's put them um, right here. Okay. Now we're going to use PEMDAS, so we're going to write PEMDAS on the top. And we're going to work through this order of operations. So we're going to start with our parentheses. Do we have parentheses? Yes. 
We're going to start by doing 12 times 8. Well, 12 times 8 is, if we don't know, we can write it over here and stack it, 96. Okay? So we have 96. We have to put everything before it. So we have plus 6 minus 3. Okay? We've done our parentheses. We don't have any exponents. We don't have any multiplication. We don't have any division. We have some addition and subtraction. So we're going to read it from left to right and do those in that order. So 96 plus 6 is 196, 97, 98, 96, 102. Subtract 3. What's 102 subtract 3? 101, 199. Did we get the value 141? No. So our parentheses are not in the right spot. So let's rewrite this problem over here. 6 plus 12 times 8 minus 3. I'm going to try and place my parentheses right here. Okay? Now we're using PEMDAS again. If at any point you have to pause this video, do it please. So this is not right, you can cross that out because we didn't get the right value. And that's okay, we're placing parentheses, we're trying it to try to get the value to be 141. Okay, so we have six plus 12, that's in parentheses. We're just gonna pretend like nothing else is there for right now. So 12 plus six is 18 wants to roll away. 18. Once I solve what's in the parentheses, that goes away. And we have to add everything that's tacked on there behind it. Okay? Any exponents? Nope. Cross it out. Multiplication? Yes. We have 18 times 8. We're going to ignore the minus 3 for just a second, okay? Now I can't do 18 times 8 in my head. I have to write it up here and solve it by the step by stacking it because I can't do it in my head. Okay? So 8 times 8 is 64. Carry the 6. 8 times 1 is 8 plus 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. So now we have 144 minus 3. 144 minus 3 is 141. Oops, that blended right in with that line. We got the right value, so that is where our parentheses needed to be. Okay? All right. I am going to be honest, I'm not a fan of those problems because I think it's just confusing, and I'd rather you just focus on the order of operations because you're going to need that way more. Okay? Let's go to the next page, which is page 69. Page 69 is where we're at at the top. Now this is where you're probably going to want to use your, oh, let me fix my page here. You're probably going to want to pull out your whiteboard and use that because they don't give you a whole lot of room here and I, I don't know why they don't because they want to try to fit a lot of problems on the page, which I think is totally pointless, but that's okay. So get your whiteboard out. We're going to take a look at number one on this page first. So what I want you to do is I want you to write, and I'm going to grab a black marker really quick. I want you to write on your page this problem for number one, okay? And all it's asking us to do is to evaluate the numerical expression. So it's telling us to solve it. So we have 10 plus 36 divided by 9. So I rewrote it on my page here. I'm going to move this over and zoom out so you can see what we're working on here. 10 plus 36 divided by 9, okay? First thing we do, we always start by doing this because we're going to use this and we're going to be um, crossing stuff out on it. I'm going to grab another color here. I've got blue in here, I think, okay? First thing we do, we see that we have multiple numbers multiple operations, so we know we're using PEMDAS. Write that at the top, so you do not forget the order of operations, okay? Now we're going to work through these together, OK? 
okay? We have parentheses. I don't see any parentheses in this, so we get to cross it off. Exponents. I don't see any exponents, so we get to cross it off. Now, the beautiful part about this is, guess what? No multiplication either, so we're going to cross it off. Division. We do have division in this problem, okay? So, I'm going to cover this up. I'm going to use a sticky note because I think that'll be easier. We're going to look at just the division part of this, okay? So, we have 36 divided by 9. So, what that's asking is how many times can 9 fit into 36? Now, if you don't know, you've got to count by 9s to figure that out. I'm going to tell you 9 fits into 36 evenly, okay? But you have to figure that out. So what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video for a second to figure out how many times 9 fits into 36. And then you can unpause it and come back. Okay, you should have paused that video. 36 divided by 9, 9 fits into 36 four times. Okay, four times because 9 times 4 is 36. So we've now solved our division, so we're going to cross that out. Well, we can't forget about this guy over here. We have to add on that 10. Now we go to our A for addition. 10 plus 4 is 14. So our answer is 14. There's no subtraction. Cross out the addition. So our answer is 14. So go back to your math page, which is page 69. And write in the answer 14 on the line. Okay? If you have plenty of room on here to do it, you can do them on here. I'm just doing it on the whiteboard because I write really big and I can't, I can't, um, I can't do it. So. Alright, here we go. We're going to do number two on that same page. this. You can use a Kleenex or a paper towel to erase your whiteboard because no, you guys don't probably don't have erasers at home. Okay. All right, here we go. We're going to look at number two. Number two says, I'm going to rewrite it on my board here, 10 plus, I've got some parentheses, 25 take away 10 divided by 5. Okay. First thing I do is I say, okay, I've got multiple numbers and multiple operation signs. So I know I'm doing order of operations, which is the same thing as PEMDAS. Write it on your page. By every single problem, write it. If you don't, you will get confused. I write it, I, I still write it, and I'm the teacher, and I do this every year, and I still write it on every problem. All right, let's take a look at it. So we're starting with our P, which it means the parentheses. So we're going to cover everything before the parentheses and everything after. I need two sticky notes on this one. Anytime we solve what's inside the parentheses, they go away. So if I have $25 and I give 10 of it to my sister, I only have $15 left. Okay, we've done the parentheses. We cannot forget about the plus 10, and we cannot forget about the divide by 5. Those get tacked onto our problem, okay? I do not see, let me fix this because it got a little smudged. I do not see any exponents, so we cross off our E for exponent. Multiplication, no multiplication. Division. Ooh, I see a division, but it's way down here. So what we're going to do is we're going to cover up the 10 plus. We're going to focus on 15 divided by 5. What that's saying is how many times can 5 fit into 15? If we count by 5s, 5, 10, 15, the answer is 3. Because 5 times 3 is 15. But we can't forget about the plus 10. We've done our division. We're down to one more operation, which is adding, which is next in PEMDAS. And 10 plus 3 is 13. That's our answer. Cross off the A. We didn't have subtraction. OK. 
Okay. You're going to go back to number two on your paper, and you're going to fill in your answer on number two for 13. I want you to take a look at number three on page 69, and I want you to work through number three. So you're going to pause the video, do it on your whiteboard or a scratch piece of paper, do it on your, do it, and then you're going to unpause the video, come back and see if you got the same answer as me, okay? All right, I'm going to write it. Here we go. This is number three. You should have paused the video and solved it. Nine take away three times two plus eight. Okay, looking at this problem, I see multiple numbers. I see multiple operations. So that tells me we are doing PEMDAS. Write it. Okay, I hope that when you solved it, when you paused the video and solved it, that you wrote PEMDAS to remind yourself that that's what you are doing. All right, let's look at this. So we're starting with the P, which stands for parentheses. I see parentheses. I see them right here. Three plus two, or I'm sorry, three times two. Cover up the stuff next to it. So we can, we're going to solve what's in the parentheses to make them go away because we don't like them. Three times two is six. Parentheses go away because we solved what was inside them. Cross out the P. We have to write everything before it and everything after it. Okay? This is what we're left with. Exponents. I don't see any exponents here, so we're good. Multiplication. I don't see any multiplication, so we cross it off. Division. I don't see any division. Addition. I do see addition down here. So we have to cover this part first. Whoops, it's a little crooked. We're solving 8 plus 6. Okay? 8 plus 6 oh, is 14. We can't forget about our minus 9. We solved the addition. Now we're down to the S, which stands for subtraction. Now, this might be the dilemma you get you get yourself into, and I'm going to tell you right now, every single time somebody does this, they look at it and they go, oh, 9 to minus 14, and they think they could just switch them around, 14 take away 9, 12, 11, 10, 9, 4, 5, sorry, wow, I just had a brain fart, okay, 5, you cannot do that. This is why I told you at the very beginning you have to solve the A and the S in whatever order they go first in. So the A and the S up here, addition and subtraction, can be solved in whatever order is first left to right. So when we look at it left to right, subtraction comes first. So we have to do the subtraction first. I knew you'd run into this problem. That's exactly why I did it. 9 take away 6 is 3. Addition plus 8 is 11, so your answer is 11. Okay, I knew that would stump you, and that's exactly why I wanted to try that problem, because you have to know, you, you need to understand that multiplication, sorry, wait for that to stop. Multiplication and division can be solved in whichever order comes first. Why is it ringing so much? Whatever order comes first, left to right, and addition and subtraction can be solved in whatever order comes first, left to right. That does not apply to these two. Those two have to be solved in those orders, okay? Um, bring your page over and write the answer 11. Okay? Let's take a look at, I want to do one of these really quick, and then I'm going to assign your math problems for you, okay? Um, so I want to, ooh, what do I want to look at? I want to look at five. No, I don't. I want to look at four. I think four is a, is a good one to look at. We could probably do four and five, but let's for sure look at four. Okay, so erasing my whiteboard here. 
that blue does not want to go away. Okay, so we're erasing our whiteboards. We're looking at number four on page 69. So on your whiteboard or on a scratch piece of paper, rewrite that problem nice and big so you have plenty of room to look at it and write down the answers and the work as we work on, okay? Okay, so I look at this problem. I see multiple numbers, multiple operation signs. So I'm using PEMDAS. Okay, we're going to start with the P. We work left to right, just like we read a book, left to right. We're going to start with the P, which means parentheses. So we have 49 plus 4, which is, this marker is stupid. Okay, 54. We solved that so the parentheses go away. So we cross off parentheses. We have to write everything after it that we covered. I don't see any exponents here, no exponents. Multiplication, division, I see multiplication, so we're going to go ahead and go over here and solve it. I'm going to cover up the 54 minus. So we've got 4 times 10, which is just 40. We uncover and write in this part. So we solve the multiplication, there is no division. Adding and subtracting, we only have subtraction, so we're going to do that first. 54 minus 40. Now, if you don't know that off the top of your head, some people do, you need to rewrite it over off to the side and stack it. Okay, that's a strategy that you can use. 4 take away 0 is 4, 5 take away 4 is 1, so your answer is 14. Okay. Okay. I'm going to assign your homework problems because this video is getting pretty lengthy and I don't want to overwhelm you with too much, okay? So I'm going to assign your practice and homework problem. Um, use your whiteboard to solve these problems because that's going to give you um, room to write, okay? Um, please make sure you go fill out the Google form that says turn in my math homework because you need to be turning that into me every single day. Okay, if you don't turn that into me, you didn't do it. You might have done it at home, but if you don't go fill that form out, I don't know that you did it. Okay, so we're on page 71. If you have to go back and rewatch the video because you're confused about something, please do that. You can come to office hours from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. every day, and I can help you solve things. I can help you if you're, you have questions about it, if you're like, wow, I do not know what happened. I don't know why I don't get this. That's fine. Okay, so on your practice and homework, you are using PEMDAS. Please write it next to your problems as you work so you can cross them off as you go. Write your name at the top. And you're going to circle the problems on page 71 that you are going to be working through today. So I want you to work on number two, three, four. Six, mm, can't see. nine, and then on page 72, you're going to work on number one, and that's it. Cutting you some slack today, okay? So on page number 71, you're working on two, three, four, six, and nine. And then on page 72, you're working on number one, okay? Um, if you have to go back and watch the video, please do so. Don't forget to submit your homework problems, and I will see you in the next video.